Hi you guys, I apologize for the quality of this video. Um, I had to do some alterations for my son and I wasn't planning to do a recording, but since I haven't uploaded some, anything in a while, except for earlier this afternoon, I thought I should go ahead and try to record it. So my son needed his pants hemmed and he wanted them tapered a little bit. So I'm creating the taper right now from where my ruler is now. That is going to be approximately the new length. And I'm creating the area that's going to be folded up because from the, the pant, the raw edge on the pant hem up to where it's going to be sewn for the new seam, the new length, that needs to be the same width from outer pant seam to the, the inseam. So I'm creating that right now. And it's about half inch on each side and that will give him the width of the pants that he wanted. So I'm doing that. And then afterwards I'll grab the longer ruler and I will create the slant that, not the slant hem, but how the pants will go back out to its original width up towards the knee because he only wants it tapered from the knee to the ankle. So I got the hem part um, done and now I'm going to use the ruler and kind of um, mark that back out to its original width. Sorry, I'm losing my words. I can't remember what, I can't remember what the, all this is called. I think I talk too much and I just, I'm losing all my words. Anyway, so, um, What's nice about this is once you get everything marked out, you're just going to sew right on the chalk line and then you'll take out the original side seams and then press it open. Yeah, I think my lamp was creating some weird fogginess. I have to replace all these lights now they're messing up. Okay, right here, when you start your new seam, you have to make sure it intersects the original stitching line so that when you take the original stitching line out on the lower leg, that it doesn't just keep taking it out all the way up the side of the pants. And you're gonna have to do this on, you know, in, in seam and out seam. My line wasn't perfect here, but the hem is actually approximate because when I fitted my son, um, he didn't have the, the correct shoes on. So um, it was just approximate. It looks like I would have to hem it about a half an inch. And what you're seeing now is I let down the original seam, which was a good three inches hemmed up or three and a half inches. I'm only doing one leg here. I'm not going to do the second leg. I'm past the new hem length and then I'm going to blend it back out to the original stitching line at the knee. Now, when I do this, I don't cut anything off except for the length. I don't trim off the side seams. I leave them um, the full width there. I just press it open and that's how we did it in the shop. And as I've mentioned before, um, there's always more than one way to do something. So this is my way. If you do it a different way and that works for you, then that's great. Now I'm just going to take out the original side seams out 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 seam and inner seam i love when this when the stitching comes off so easily like that <laughs> yeah 
yeah, my snips are getting dull, and so I put them on my Christmas list this year so I can get more. And I press the seam open, and that's what it looks like. Now, I'm, I'm not going to show you when I fit my son. I'll just um, come back and, and mark it. So, yeah, he's not going to be um, doing the video. Now, I measure, I had him put them on and I measured each leg and the front marks were exactly the same and the back marks were like a quarter inch off. And I always go with the longer mark because the, even the longer mark would not even come close to the floor. Although it does make creating that slant hem a little more difficult. Now, if you've ever had a slant hem, you, a lot of times you'll see in there, they'll clip the front crease at the, at the very, the raw edge on the hem. I don't like to clip the fabric because I don't like the threads to come undone. And I just generally don't like the way it looks. So I'm making the marks on the back so that they're even. And this is going to, this is a big slant. Um, it's like three quarters of an inch difference. And so I'm going to mark all sides because this is where I will be folding my fabric and that's a lot to fold <laughs> and then I want a two and a half inch hem and I do that because if for some reason he changes his style and he wants to let the pants out again width wise and lengthwise I have plenty to work with and not only that if I don't trim off the side seams and the inseam fabric, um, I won't have to pull out my serger and do each one individually. So I love flexibility. I love options. So I keep the options open like this. So there's my new fold line and my cut line. I got my, I'm using my new Guggenheim scissors, which are amazing. I really like them. Okay, when you do this, parts of the seam allowance want to drop down below the the raw edge don't let them do that because it's going to create a pull and it'll it, it won't lay right at least by my guessing that's the, that's my in, in instincts so if they were even when you cut them make sure they're even when you sew them so I'm correcting it here because it's at an angle and that's a good half inch or more of fabric that's wanting to drop down is kind of loose. So make sure they're aligned with that raw edge before you surge over it. Okay. Now I'm going to fold it on the line and in the back, it's going to look like a point, the chalk mark. So I just kind of round that out with the hem. I'm not keeping exactly to the chalk mark. Um, I'll go as far as I can on the sides and the fronts will have to be kind of rounded out, which means they'll be a little bit longer and that's fine. 
So what I do is I line up the front crease and the back crease and I work each side over to the side seams and then at that point when they're laying nicely you'll see that there is a bubble of fabric on the side of the pants because there's too much fabric on the pant and not enough in the hem. So what I do is I will split open the, the side seams as much as I need them to be to lay flat with the pants. And I'll show you that in a minute. This will take a little finagling, getting it to lay correctly. But just keep working at it until it's laying correctly for you. Once I can get all the areas on each side of the side seams, the outside and the inseam, then I will address the actual seams. I'm having to make sure that front crease is lined up. moving out the excess fabric, moving it over towards. You can see there's a little issue between the crease and the side seam. It's, it's not wanting to lay properly. So I just keep working with it until um, it gets to a place that I can just adjust the side seams. There you go, you see that bubble right there on the pants and it's right near the side seam. So I'm trying to smooth it all where that bubble is basically directed at the side seam. And at that point I can let that hem out right there. There we go. You can see it laying a little more flat. I had to open them quite a bit, but I like this because the side seams are, because it's a, there's a seam, the fabric is folded under so you have no raw uh, edges in there. Whereas if I clip the front, it would have left some raw edges. Here they're already tucked in because of the side seam. There you go. And then right at the bottom of that V, I'm, st I'm stitching right there so that it doesn't undo any further. I will stitch through the hem and then I will stitch through the side seam or the seam allowance of the pants just to make sure it doesn't shift and it doesn't come undone. And I'm pinning it in place at that point I will just tack down um, the legs of that V. 
with some invisible stitches. There you go. And I'll do that with all the different, all sides. Having to work on the bubble on this side now. Now I'm just going to hand stitch everything. Wouldn't it be nice if I could actually sew this fast? <laughs> One of these days I'm going to get my standalone invisible blind hammer and it will really be this fast. Of course, living in a tiny house, I might have to get rid of my bed, but I think it'll be worth it. And that's it, you guys. Hope you like this video. If you haven't, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.